but good morning. W welcome again. Welcome to uh, Calvary Chapel Breath of Life and um, our worship service online. I want to welcome back all those who have been joining us. Uh, this is week three now um, that we're doing this. And I also want to uh, welcome all of those who um, are new to this. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, as we've been meeting online, we've been uh, adjusting to um, this new way of getting uh, together. Um, and through technology, we thank God that he's provided this. Um, we, there are certain rules that we have in place that we want to make sure that our worship service goes smoothly. And so we're just asking that um, as everyone is meeting online, you have the ability to um, show your video. You have the ability to um, um, unmute yourself. We just ask that as you are showing video, you keep in mind that uh, the video can be seen by everyone who has joined, and we also broadcast through YouTube. So um, just make sure the video is not a distraction to the worship service. Um, and um, what we would like to do, if we feel like it's become a distraction, what we'll do is um, turn the video off and uh, send you a little chat just to remind you that we're online. And also, um, what we've been doing is that we've been having the time of prayer after worship and the time of word. And so as the Lord leads, as he's moving your heart and he's giving you um, um, a prayer that we may um, be edified by, um, we ask that um, you can unmute your mic at that time and share in prayer. And that will be done um, after the word is given. Um, Pastor Keith will announce when that can happen. Um, if, you, if you're a mic shy, um, and you don't want to get on the mic, we have a couple of ways that you can share your prayer request. Um, uh, you can do it online. Go to our website at ccbreathoflife.org, um, and there's a contact form. Uh, you can ent enter your information in contact form, and that will come to us, and our re your request will be with us, and we'll be praying for you um, with your request. And also, there's a chat um, function within the Zoom meeting that allow you also to be able to enter your request there and we can receive your prayer requests through those avenues. Um, as we continue to re meet remotely and, and apart, um, what we've been using as communication pieces are our online webpage, ccbreathoflife.org, and then also through Facebook. Um, if you have a Facebook account, um, please uh, join us on Facebook, follow us, connect to us. Um, you can do that by going to our website. At the bottom of the page, there is a Facebook icon. Click that and now take you to our site and you can subscribe or follow and continue to be part of the community. We're gonna use these two avenues to be able to send information out of activities and events that we're doing online. So please keep tuned. Um, without further ado, let's open up in worship and we'll move right into our worship. Uh, let's open up in prayer, and we'll move right into our worship time. Let's look to the Lord. Our Father, we praise you. We give you thanks because, Lord, you are worthy, and there's none like you, O oh God. Lord, because your compassions fail not, Lord, your mercies are renewed every morning. And, Lord, we need them, especially at this time. Our desire, Lord, is to put you in your proper place, exalted above all things, Lord. For, Lord, you are a keeper, you are a sustainer and a redeemer. So receive our worship this morning, O oh God, as we have gathered online, um, separated by distance, connected by your spirit, and through our hearts, God. Lord, we pray that everything that will be done this morning will be to glorify you and edify one another. Touch the technology. Touch your mouth, <clears throat> a pastor. May our songs of worship be directed by you. May you receive them, O oh God. Be glorified in our worship this morning. We thank you, Lord, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Um, morning. As we enter into our first song, I picked uh, my old one first. Just, it reminded me a lot of what we talked about last week as far as the church is not a building. And um the first line, as we lift up our hands, will you meet us here? We're all in different houses and different homes using different devices, but we're all under one God. And so just keeping that in mind as we sing this song. <clears throat> As we lift up our hands, 
said, are oh, you? Can you meet me here today? With mercies that I knew. All my fears and doubts, they can all come true. Because I can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today, with mercies that I knew. All my fears and doubts, they can all come true. Because I can't stay long, and I believe you are the way and the truth. The life I believe you are the way, the truth, the life I believe you Father God, um, I just thank you so much for this time of worship that we have, Lord. I just pray um, for a spirit of gratefulness, Lord, for a spirit that um, will just look to you, God, and just understanding that our truth remains the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore, Lord, because you are the way, the truth, and the life, God. And I just pray that we look to you for hope, Lord. We look to you for courage. I pray that um, we don't grow weary of doing good wherever we are, Lord, that we would seek to serve you um, in these different places, Lord. Pray that we remember that we are one body under you, Lord, under our one Lord and one Christ. I just use this time um, in the word, Lord, to bless our hearts, to encourage us, to strengthen us. Lord, be with PK. I'd give him the words to speak, Lord, and I pray that our hearts are ready to hear and receive. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kayla. Um, thank you for that time of uh, worship. And um, without uh, further ado, Pastor Keith, if you would go ahead and take the mic and um, bless us in the word. Good morning again, saints. It's a blessing, tremendous uh, encouragement uh, to see uh, some of your faces. As Kayla uh, stated earlier, although we physically uh, unable to meet, we are still connected uh, via media uh, through God's spirit. And so it, it is uh, to me uh, something that I look forward uh, to in coming together with you. Now before uh, the coronavirus hit, uh, we were going through uh, the book of Ephesians, and we got as far as chapter four. And this morning, that's where we're going uh, to resume. We were talking about the rich inheritance uh, that God has blessed us with. And Paul, in the first three chapters, uh, he was talking about how the church has been blessed to be uh, pre destined, um, called to a high calling of, of uh, the tremendous gifts uh, that God has given uh, to us and how he wanted us to walk in those gifts and in those blessings. And this is coming from someone who is currently residing in a prison, a Roman prison. And so uh, here is Paul encouraging uh, the saints and letting them uh, know uh, that there's no circumstance, there's no uh, situation, uh, there's no obstacle uh, that they will face uh, that should hold them back uh, from uh, proceeding in the will of God. 
And so the book of Ephesians, one of the most balanced books when it comes to understanding the spiritual truths of scripture and then taking uh, those truths and practically applying them uh, to our daily lives. An example of this, again, is how Paul initially focused on doctrine and our position in Christ. And now in these last three chapters, uh, the focus is on the practical so that we can effectively live for Christ. And so uh, Paul is going to begin to speak on topics of our conduct and our conversations, our family and our professional lives, our choices and decision making, even how we're to use our time, talents, and treasure. Uh, Ephesians will speak clearly and concisely about all these things so as to take away uh, any confusion that any of us uh, may have. And so with that said, uh, we are going to dive into uh, the word of God. So let's go before the Lord real quickly. Father God, again, thank you for the privilege and opportunity for us to study uh, your word this morning. Thank you for allowing us to worship in song. And now as we worship uh, through the study of your word, we pray that you will add a blessing uh, to it, uh, that wherever we are, Lord God, you'll minimize distractions, uh, Lord, whether that's uh, those uh, that uh, we may have awakened to, Lord God, or even those that we find ourselves uh, being confronted by right now, Lord God. Just remove it, Lord, uh, that uh, the focus will be exactly where it needs to be, and that's on you, Lord God. And so we lift you up as your word said we should, that you may draw all men and women, boys and girls, unto yourself. And so I pray that my words will be your words, and that I'll decrease while you increase. Have your way. It's in the name of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the church says, amen. So chapter uh, four uh, begins with the uh, Apostle Paul identifying himself as a prisoner, but not a Rome. Even though he currently resides in a Roman prison, he says that he is a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And that is very important because this emphasis of being a prisoner of Christ allows him uh, to sit down with Christ and truly understand his role within the body of Christ. And so in verse one, uh, when he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. And so again, uh, this is very important because uh, this emphasizes how learning doctrine is not us accumulating information just for the sake of having it. But our duty or responsibility is to take uh, that information what we know, and what we learn, and apply it to our daily lives. And for that to happen, we have to know who it is we belong to. No matter who you are and what your station in life, you know, you're going to serve something or someone, whether it's yourself or some belief system, all of us are under the influence of something, someone, or some ideology. And here, Paul says he's under the influence 
of Jesus. That's who he serves. He says, I'm the prisoner of the Lord. Yes, uh, Rome thinks they have him bound. Rome thinks they have him in chains. But the Lord had already freed him from all those things. So again, no matter where he found himself, whatever situation or circum circumstance uh, that he was in, uh, Paul said, I belong to Christ. I am serving Christ. And we have to remember that because I know a lot of us uh, feel trapped uh, uh, today. A lot of us uh, uh, feel like, hey, you know what? I feel like I'm bound. Uh, you know, I'm restricted in what I can do. I don't uh, feel as free as I once did. Uh, but we, again, have to keep in mind what the word of God says. No, you're free in Christ. And therefore, uh, your situation, your circumstance does not uh, determine how God uses you. And so Paul wanted his readers uh, to understand that uh, fully. And so he says, if you're in, in agreement to everything that he has said in the previous three chapters, uh, then uh, these things, they pertain to you. He's gonna spell out, just as he did before, in glorious detail, all that God has not only done for us, and he did it freely by his grace, but how we should respond. And so he says, we should walk worthy. It's interesting how Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, if you go back there around verse uh, 6, how uh, the Lord had raised the church up in heavenly places to sit together. He wanted us to see the need to sit and understand the richness of Christianity before we learn to walk and then live out our faith. I like this because you see a progression. You think about babies. Babies first begin to sit up, then crawl, and finally to stand and do what? To walk. It's, it's as natural as breathing. There's a progression uh, here uh, that happens uh, physically. And it's the same thing uh, spiritually uh, for the church. As we uh, are learning to, to first understand whose we are, that we belong to Christ, that requires us sit, uh, sitting, that requires us listening, reading, studying, and then afterwards, we thoroughly know who we are. Have to know whose we are first. We belong to Christ before we know who we are, that we're children of God. You think about uh, the misrepresentation that so many of us have prior to Christ, where we believe that, oh, we're all children of God. I heard that uh, since I was a, a, a young boy. Uh, and I believe that we're all the children of God. I, it wasn't until I became a Christian, until I started reading the word of God for myself and, and really listening uh, to people who were astute in teaching the word of God, going through the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, when you understand that God never said that we were all children of God. He said we were all uh, his creation, uh, but in order to become a child of God, uh, you had to uh, go through a new birth. You had to be born again. That's when you become a child of God. See, the world uh, still misunderstands that. Uh, they don't understand. We just saw his creation, every last one of us, as soon as we come into the world, we're God's creation. But in order to become a child of God, then I have to repent of my sins. I have to receive uh, what Jesus Christ has done for me on the cross. I have to 
embrace what the word of God has said. And the spirit comes and lives inside of us. And that's when we become a child of God. You know, that takes us sitting down, uh, listening, being still, as Psalm 46 says, and know that he is God. As I was thinking on that, uh, I couldn't help uh, but look at my personal situation right now. As many of you know that I am a sports enthusiast. And so as I shared with you, I believe last week, how I was so bummed out uh, when it was announced that there would be no March Madness ever since I can remember uh, around this time. I mean, it was the thrill of NCAA uh, basketball. But this year, for the very first time, that was taken away. In fact, for the first time, uh, there's not a whole lot of reason to talk about sports uh, because it's, it's not going on. And now I really see what a distraction these things can be. Because now I, um, I, I feel like I got blinders on spiritually, you know, that I can go through the word and, and my devotions and my studying and, and memorization and, and, and just meditating on, on the Lord. Not that I couldn't do it before but there were so many things swirling around that i didn't even realize it and it's like the lord allowed my life to slow down not just with sports but so many other things and you could prioritize those things that really really are important and then you can look at those things that really aren't important but uh they were taking up an important place in our lives and we realized you know what really need those things you know i enjoy them but i don't need them but that takes sometimes just sitting down and being still it's the same thing when it comes to the body of christ that's what paul is talking about uh, here in this first uh verse uh, as he's writing to uh the church and so he tells us that we're representatives of the king so now there's an expectation concerning our conduct, our conversations, our decision making as people uh, will no longer only see you, but also the Lord whom you say you serve. So this should motivate us, as Paul says in verse one, to walk worthy, not so that God would love us more because uh, he already loves you and I perfectly, but because he loves us, we want to please him. So it's motivating uh, uh, out of gratitude that we want to walk worthy and not from merit. He goes on in verses uh, two and three, where he doesn't just say walk well, worthy, but he paints a picture. He doesn't leave us uh, there. He gives us a picture of what that should look like. For he says, a, a worthy walk should be marked by lowliness and gentleness with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Lowliness speaks of humility. And Gentleness is a product of that humility. For when you receive unkindness, you respond not with retaliation, but with gentleness. And despite what you and I heard, gentleness is not weakness. It's actually the opposite. It's a possession of inner strength. Moses in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, is called the meekest man upon the earth. He was meek, according to Numbers chapter 12. And yet, he possessed the authority to usher in plagues, to heal leprosy, 
to speak to the Red Sea and cause it to open up so that God's people could walk through it. In Matthew chapter 11 and verses 29 and 30, it says Jesus was meek and lowly in heart. And so none of us would dare characterize our Lord as weak, would we? But instead, we would say uh, that he's strong. And so we need not to listen uh, to what others say about being meek, being humble, because that's not weakness. That's actually a strength, uh, because it, it, it takes a whole lot uh, to, uh, to be uh, gentle and, and to not retaliate and to humble ourselves and, and to trust the Lord uh, uh, when we've been offended. Amen? He continues with that where he says uh, that walking worthy also consists of being long-suffering. Now, often in scripture, when you see that word, it speaks of patience, but this goes beyond patience. In the Greek, this means enduring patience. Uh, we need this for the inevitable wrongs that all of us will endure from others and from each other. I mean, you think about the example of a little puppy when it comes to a, a older dog and the, the little puppy is jumping around and he's nagging and he, he wants to play and he's tugging and he's doing all these different things to the older dog and, and provoking him. And I don't know if you've ever seen that relationship I, I have uh, uh, where the older dog just tolerates the youthful exuberance of the younger dog. And, and, and instead of responding uh, with a heavy hand because he could hurt uh, that puppy, he, he, he just, you know, allows him to roll on him and, and tug on him and grab on him and, 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 and push on him until, you know, uh, the younger dog just, just goes about uh, his business. And it's interesting uh, dynamic that well, because when you think about it spiritually, uh, that's what happens uh, with us, that people annoy you, right? Uh, people do things that get on your nerves and, and they disturb you and, and, and sometimes us, uh, act out of turn or, or, or uh, in the most inopportune of times. And yet, instead of lashing out, what are we called to do? We're called to endure, to be patient, to bear, he says, as he goes on, with one another. That means to make allowances for the faults and failures of others. This leads to you, this leads to me being able to genuinely forgive someone and not just give a courtesy facade uh, that you really uh, uh, don't mean. You know, that if I'm tolerating and enduring and, and I'm responding with gentleness and, and meekness, then I'm able to forbear others. I'm going to be offended. People are going to get on my nerves. They're going to do uh, some things that I genuinely don't like. The question is, what does God's word say about how we should respond? Well, we see it right here uh, in these uh, two verses. He goes on in verse three uh, by sharing how this humble, forgiving attitude is going to allow us to fulfill a core belief within the body of Christ of having unity of the spirit. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That doesn't mean that we're going to always agree on everything. But it also protects us from separating based upon personal feelings of pride, which sadly leads to so many rifts within the church. 
Notice he says, you have to endeavor. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but that means to make every effort. And he talks about the bonds of peace. So that could be fragile. You know, we're, we're gonna uh, go into that in a second as well. And he calls it bonds or, 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 or bands, it's held together. But it, but it can be fragile as we uh, uh, so uh, uh, have experienced in our lives, whether that's with our families, whether that is with our, our friendships, whether that is uh, with our community, on our jobs. Uh, you know, you see so many people have separated from one another, from each other, uh, uh, based upon things uh, that they really could sit down and reason together and they look at it and say, you know what, this shouldn't have been that big of a deal. And yet I've seen people even on their deathbeds still holding grudges as they are about to enter into eternity. It's one of the saddest, saddest, uh, 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 affairs when you uh, witness something uh, like that. And, and yet it's prevalent uh, uh, in our culture uh, today and, and in our time uh, with people. Uh, Paul says the church should not, this, we should not be in bondage to that because that's exactly what it is. And so he says in uh, verses four through six, he's going to give an example of what unity uh, should look like. And he uses what we share in common. He says in verse four, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. He says, we have one body, we have one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. Each of these things, when you really think about it, is greater than any potential difference we may have, and therefore more important than any hurt feelings I may have experience for no matter what differences we may have in the end we are all going to spend what eternity together and all the pettiness that exists now will be forgot and true fellowship will occur this is why our believers as believers we should be known as fire or not as fire starters going around looking for fights. But instead, we should be known as firefighters looking to spread unity and not division. And folks, you know, that is a battle that resides uh, within us. That's why in this section, Paul urges us in verse three to endeavor. Remember, I talked about that word, how it means to make every effort or to labor. That means I, I have to be intentional when it comes to uh, keeping the unity because uh, the bonds of peace, again, they're, they're fragile. They, they can be easily displaced. And it's gonna take you and it's gonna take I, uh, uh, me and it's gonna take us to put in maximum effort for unity to prevail within the body. Amen? So that's where we're going to leave off uh, this morning. Uh, we'll pick up uh, next week uh, in verse seven, as Paul has a lot more to say uh, in this letter to uh, the church as he's uh, going to get into how our learning and our applying should not only benefit the individual, but it should benefit all those that are 
around us. So my prayer is that we'll never just be hearers of God's word, that we'll be doers of his word. It's, it's so beautiful uh, that as you open up his word, you notice no matter how closed our hearts may be, he begins to open our hearts up like a flower uh, that's, that's blooming. Uh, you think about uh, in our area uh, where we had the cherry blossoms and it's in a particular year or, or uh, it's at a particular time of the year in which they bloom. And it's at a particular time that they bloom uh, the most. You ever notice it always comes after what winter, after the cold, when the spring is being ushered in. And when we think about the spring, we can't help but think about summer and sunshine, right? That as the warmth is coming, then the, the flowers begin to bloom more. That's how the word of God is uh, to uh, our hearts and our souls. That the word of God opens us up and it encourages us and it reminds us of the rich inheritance uh, that we have from the Lord. It's not something that any of us actually deserve. It's something that God has graciously just given to us freely. So you stay encouraged. I pray uh, that God will just continue uh, to uh, bless you. And I know the word of God does not return back void. Amen. So I'll turn it, the service back over uh, to Pastor Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Um, as we continue our worship, um, we'll move in now into uh, a time of uh, just prayer and reflection. Um, as you were talking, Pastor Keith, um, it just reminded me of how in these times um, when the Lord shakes up our world, right, shakes up the ground that we're standing on, it helps us to focus on the things that we may have been taken for granted. And um, for me, when you said that we needed to sit still and know that he's God, um, one of the things that popped up in my head was just taking prayer for granted. Um, you know, I continued to pray, you know, on a daily basis, but it became routine in my life. You know, it was just a regimen that I followed. And the exercise of in prayer, just being still and quiet, not saying anything, listening for his voice, hearing as he directs, as he instructs, as he comforts, as he speaks, is such a discipline that we need to continue to do. And God has given not only me, but all of us to be able to sit still. We have more time on our hands. Find that quiet place within your home or where you're residing right now and, and be away from the distractions that are around you and just sit still and hear and listen as he speaks. Um, that was very encouraging to me and thank you for that um, e exhortation. Um, as we continue to worship him, um, let's, uh, let's take this time to pray right now. Um, as God is moving your heart, um, what we've allowed everyone to be able to do is to be able to unmute their mic and um, pray. And so I'll start us off with praying. And as God leads your heart, um, go ahead and unmute your mic and, and pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your word, which is true. Your word sanctifies us, Lord. It gives us what we need to know to be conformed into your likeness, Lord, to be more like you every day, oh Lord. And so, Lord, I thank you that, God, though heaven and earth may pass away, your word will still remain. We're in an unprecedented time, Lord. And um, I don't forget um, that there are many around us, Lord, that are directly impacted by coronavirus. And Lord, I pray that God, you would touch them, that you would heal them, that you would comfort them, 
and that they will know that you are a God that's near and not afar off. You're faithful in all your ways, Lord, despite, Lord, this storm that we're going through. You'll keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you. So, Lord, we cry out for help. We look to the hills from where our house comes from, knowing that it will come from you. We'll wait as you work, God. Work in us and through us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, Lord, I just, um, just um, reading through this passage, Father, and, and no doubt, um, Paul is aware of schisms and disunity in the body, Father. Uh, and as we have extra time to pray and to reflect on the things you're speaking to us, God, let us not spend all of our time uh, focusing on this virus, but also, Lord, uh, focusing on our rebel hearts, Father. If we're honest, God, uh, there's still much rebel in each of our hearts, God. And I think Paul is targeting that with these words of exhortation, God. Our willingness and our desire oftentimes to go our own way and to do what we think is best, Father, instead of uh, focusing on unity around the principles of Scripture, Father. And so, Lord, I pray as we examine ourselves, Father, that you show us, God, those areas of our lives where we're still treading our own way. We're still uh, insisting upon our own opinions, God. We're still insisting upon charting our own course, Father. When you've no doubt been trying to keep us in line with your word for some time, God. And so, Lord, I do pray as we meditate on these verses, God. Lord, you remind us what it really means to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Because I, I guess if you ask any one of us, do we belong to Jesus? We'll all say, sure. But he's pointing at our conduct and whether or not it's in line with who we say we follow, God. And so, Lord, uh, help me, help us to examine ourselves, Father. Are we gentle, God? Are we long-suffering? Do we bear anyone's burdens other than our own? And do we labor to keep peace among the body, God? Lord, examine me, examine us, Father, that these words would not fall on deaf ears, God. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the word, Lord. We also thank you, Lord, um, just for your grace and your mercy during this time, Father God, Lord. Lord, you tell us to be thankful in all things, Lord. And Lord, even though uh, this seems like a negative event, Lord, there's some positive in it, Lord. We need to open our hearts and our minds to what that is, Lord. That whether it be spending time, more time with your family, Lord, taking walks, Lord, spending more time in the word, Lord, spending more time in prayer, whatever it is, that's a positive. This is time to re-examine ourselves, Lord, and just to look at the activities that we were doing prior to this crisis, Lord, to see if they were even necessary, Lord. Um, praying, Lord, that as we move through this crisis, Lord, that when it's over, that we all don't go back to things as they were, Lord, yes. that we will continue, Lord, doing those things that are you, Lord, spending more time with you, spend more time with families, husbands, with wives, Father God, Lord. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, I would like to lift up all the young people, Lord, all the children up to you, Lord. That, Lord, you just be with them, Lord. Give them a sense of peace at this moment, Lord. Um, let us not forget that the children pay attention to the things that are going on around them. They may not speak it. Um, they have concerns and they have needs, Lord. Just let us keep all the young people in mind, Lord. Lift them up, baby, Lord. Check on them. Um, ask them how they feel and and guide them every day. Amen. Dear God, I'd just like to um, pray, Lord, just for those who are sick right now, Lord, who are feeling um, under the weather, Lord, whether it's with um, the coronavirus, Lord, or just with any kind of ailment, Lord, I pray that you would touch their bodies, Lord, give them um, comfort or healing right now, um, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that um, that it would pass quickly, Lord, um, you know those in our body who are, who are just afflicted or who have um, weakened immune systems, Lord, I just pray you would keep them, um, Lord, if it's our backs, Lord, our uh, sleep being habits, insomnia, would you know what we're dealing with? But I just pray, Lord, that you would be our healer, Lord, that you would just touch, move in a mighty way in our in our body and just throughout this nation and the world um, with those who are just not feeling well, Lord, even right now. Lord, I pray you would ease their symptoms. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, um, I come before you and I lift up our elderly, Lord. I lift up um, those who um, are sick and elderly, Lord. I lift up those who aren't sick, Lord. I pray that you'll protect them, keep them safe. Um, keep our younger ones that are safe. Um, keep the college students, Lord, that still have to go to school safe, Lord. Just keep us all safe, Lord, and um, allow us to be safe. Um, be careful with where we're going and um, what we're doing and not being selfish but thinking about other people as we do things and understanding that distancing, distancing from people is the way that we keep everyone safe, Lord. And I pray that you'll give the, um, the doctors and the people that are working in the lab trying to find a vaccine, Lord. I pray that you'll keep them, um, give them knowledge on what they need to do, Lord, to make things better for us, Lord, that we can still have a great year, Lord, and that this year will be a year of revival and that will um, we'll all become a little bit closer to you. Um, Lord, I come before you, God, and um, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for technology, Lord God. I thank you for the opportunity to still come together virtually, Lord, um, although it's virtual. It still has been sweet, Lord, just a sweet time of fellowship, Lord, as we, hearts, Lord God, as we um, lift your word up, Lord, uh, worship together, Lord. Just thank you for this, God. I um, also want to pray for those who are um, just dealing with loneliness, feeling isolated, Lord, and that can even be um, people who are surrounded with kids or spouses, Lord God. It's just um, it's a different time, Lord. I pray for your presence. Lord, um, you said that you would um, uh, be ever present with us, Lord God. So I pray for your comfort, Lord, for your hope, Lord God. Um, I pray that we would still find ways to connect with one another, Lord, be it by text or phone calls, Lord God. Would you still keep us um, just unified, uh, Lord, as a body, Lord. Help us to um, reach out, uh, Lord God, and to pray for one another, Lord. And God, we just thank you. Thank you again for this time in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father God, I thank you. And I pray, Lord, that you uh, just continue to speak to our hearts and minds, Lord. You're an awesome God. We need you, Father God, and everything that you do is sure. As we put our hope and trust in you, this is a great day to be alive. Father, I also want to lift up those in our congregation, Lord, um, that are self-employed, Father God, Lord. This is a particularly devastating time for them, Lord. Um, I just pray, Lord, as they um, move through this crisis, Lord, you just give them grace, Lord. You um, just remind them, Lord, of your promises, Lord. You are the provider, Lord, and that you have them, you see them, and you will care for them. And I also pray, Lord, that they won't hesitate, Lord. You reach out to the body, Lord, if they have a need, Father. Just ask if you can help them. About this morning, we are one body, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Um, I guess families grieving um, during this season where uh, many of us are at home and spending extra time together, Lord God, just be with you for this time of just bless us with the Lord and just ask you um, that you would strengthen relationships with you, to be strengthen relationships with you, to strengthen relationships with your spouses and um, even the same parents and children that are now is the victims of personal time, Lord. Um, would there be unity in the times, Lord, and the families that know the pathetic those who um, don't, Lord God, um, where there may be this unity feeling that you're seeking to justify on your body, where people are spending more time together that may usually not be together, would you um, just reveal things that may need to, um, to be given? I just pray that this would be a fruitful time, Lord, within relationships. And you can some challenges that being a close quarter between the people who need to draw some individuals to you, realizing their need. Dear Lord, I come before you, Lord, just thanking you for your grace and mercy and how you've met us so far um, here today in this time. Lord, I, I pray directly for all the frontline um, healthcare workers and grocery store workers, Lord, that are essentially being putting their lives at, at rest, Lord. I, I pray for supplies. I pray for um, things that are much needed, Lord. Um, I thank you, Lord, so much for the um, or just giving us the mindset, Lord, to be creative, Lord, um, to add protection when we don't have the need of protection, Lord. I just thank you. I, I pray that you go with them all, us all, Lord, as we provide care, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and discernment, um, judgment, Lord. And I just pray that we're able to take care of people, um, keep them out of the hospitals, um, and take care of the ones that are in the hospitals, Lord. Um, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I pray for leaders who are in a position to make tough choices, Lord, with limited resources. For Lord, given the political climate in the country this time, God, we ask that you would help them to set aside the differences, God. And, come up with solutions to those who are really in need. Father, I'd like to continue to lift up our children to you, Lord God, who are walking through this um, as well, Lord. I pray um, that we continue to point them to Jesus, Lord, um, not to the worldly solutions to what we're going through, Lord. I pray um, that they will take hold of what God is showing us through this, Lord God. May we be that example to them, Lord God, as we walk through, Lord, trusting in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
and we lift up, continue to lift up our children, Lord God. There are so many around the country and around the world for whom school was a safe place to go. Um, and we just pray for their protection, Lord God, those who may be experiencing um, any type of abuse in their homes, Lord God, that you would just protect them, that you would cover them um, during this time where they um, are without school and without the care of perhaps teachers, Lord God, would you protect them? Would you protect them from all of the, the ills that could be in homes and, and surrounding them, Lord God? Um, would you protect as well um, any spouses that are now forced to be in close quarters in homes with um, individuals who may be um, abusive to them as well, Lord God? We recognize that this additional time at home is great for many but for some it may be um it may be their worst fear or worst nightmare so we're just asking for your protection God. We ask this in Jesus name. And Father, I come before you just also um, praying for our education system right now, Lord. We are in unprecedented time, Lord. And many of us are looking for answers, looking for ways to still do our job and impact our students and their families in a positive way, Lord. And um, in many cases, even our leaders don't really have direction to know what to do. But Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to continue to be able to be impactful to our students, Lord God. Would you help us as teachers, Lord God? to show love and care. Lord, I know that there are many efforts that are going out to help to educate our students for the remainder of this school year, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, for our leaders in the system, Lord, that you would help them, that you would give them direction, that you would give them guidance, Lord God, on the best next steps for our children, Lord God. Um, this really leads to the place of really not knowing the best, the best method of care for them, the best method of educating them, Lord God. And how we're going to begin our next school year, Lord. We don't have the answers, but Father, I pray that this will be a time where our leaders will look to you, Father, knowing that um, we are not in control, but Lord, you are. I pray that you would use those of us who know you to be witnesses and light to our school communities, to our neighborhoods, Lord God, to be able to um, point people to a hope that is far greater than any of us, Lord. So just thank you, and I see things in Jesus' name. Anyone else that has a prayer request? If not, I'm going to close it out in a word of prayer. And um, we're going to turn it over to meet and greet. Amen. Let's look unto the Lord. Father God, again, we thank you for all things. You're an awesome God. Without you, we could do nothing, Lord. Even this day, as we woke up, Lord, we woke up by your power, Lord, your grace and mercy, and your kindness towards us. The day when the world reels uh, to and fro, Father God, you're still stable, Lord. You're the God that keeps us on the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can be in a, a witness for you, Father God, that we are not stumbled by the things that are going on in this world today, Lord. We're excited, Father God, in, in the midst of this storm, Lord. You're at work, Lord. You're drawing people to you, Father God. You're even using uh, your children, Lord, to share the good news of the God of glory, the God of salvation, Lord. We can take this opportunity, Father God, to, to meet the people where they're at, Lord, because many are lost, Lord, but you have given us the answer, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Have your way, Father God. Uh, show us, Lord, that um, even if there is a perceived lack, Father God, you are still good, Lord, because you've given us everything that we need. Show us, Lord, uh, your plan, Lord, for our ministry, Father God, as we move forward, Lord. Uh, trusting in you, you know what's needed for us, Father God. We desire, Lord, to reveal those things to those who desire to participate in this ministry, Father God. Again, Lord, use your power, Lord. Show the world that you're still God. You've never changed, Father God. You're not moved by situations, Lord. You use everything for your power, for your glory and honor. 
have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor James. Um, just before we get to meet and greet, let's um, close out in a song we can worship together. Um, and then right after the song is complete, um, feel free to uh, greet your virtual neighbor. Amen. Did you come right. mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kayla.
Father God, um, I just thank you so much, uh, God, for this continued worship, Lord, though uh, we are distant, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we are one body, Lord, under one God and under one spirit, Jesus, I just pray, God, that we remember who you are, we remember who we are, Lord, and we remember um, what your word says, and that is true, and I pray that uh, we look to you um, in the midst of all this chaos, Lord, because you provide peace that surpasses all understanding, Jesus. Um, encourage us, Lord. Let this, this fellowship be sweet, God, and just um, bring us together. Have your way with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Mommy, how do you let them see you? Hey, Praise the Lord. Everyone have a wonderful week. Hi Sydney. You said it again. Hi Sydney. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Sydney. No, no. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be on the internet. Someone's gonna look me up. Hacker. Hacker. So you will not put me out there. Kayla. Yeah. Guess what? What? Where, where's Raya? I see like her mom and her dad, but I can't see her. What did you say? Oh, oh Elias. Yeah? I finished the third book. I finished the series. He's getting to be oh, big. Yeah. Oh, get me. <laughs> he's getting really big. He's so handsome. Oh, he's so handsome. It is. Hi. Hey. Hey.
weird is that? Man, this is so Say bye. <laughs> Nate, say hi. What's up? Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi, Gabby. Boo. Oh, look at Gabby. Look at Gabby. Hi, Kuma. Oh, is that a boy and a girl? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Hi. Hi. Oh, you gotta move to side. He's up there. Right there. I'm talking about your mama. Hi, 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 Oh. Hey, anybody want to see a new addition to the family? He's too black. Look at him, though. It's me. Huh? You can see him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see my man, Kobe. Hey, Joey. 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 Look at that. Yeah, it's been great, but we might have to see me, Kobe. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh, Be hanging out with Kiana. the whole family. Joey, hey. 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 Hey.